So I thought it would be fun to animate some famous brand logos, starting with Mountain Dew. In my family, when I was a kid, we used to love Mountain Dew. I drank it, my brother drank it, even our dog Penny drank it, which is not good. Dogs should not drink Mountain Dew. It's probably the reason that she was so crazy all the time. But we all love Mountain Dew. So without any further ado, Let's do it, shall we? Let's animate this logo. So normally when I'm working with a client, I'm gonna ask them a million questions and get a ton of adjectives about their brand. But since I didn't do that with Mountain Dew, they didn't hire me. I just have to use my own version of what Mountain Dew is to me, which is kind of like, you know, edgy gamer, extreme sports, crackhead energy. And that's what we're gonna go off of for the vibe of this logo. Because you know, when you drink a Mountain Dew, there's kind of only two scenarios that can play out. It's either, you know, an all night gamer session, or you're probably gonna commit a crime later. So when I look at this, here's what I see. I see a lot of angular lines. That's a lot of kind of movement, right? That's pretty extreme and edgy. I see really bold colors. I kind of see some shapes that could potentially be like mountains, very mountainous. That's kind of extreme sports and it plays off of the obvious pun that's in the name. These really strong outlines that are happening, right? These really, these stacking of outlines that we're gonna wanna play with, that's also very bold. It's very striking. So for me, what I think I wanna go with is something that can combine the gamer feel, the movement, and also this kind of outdoor mountains. Um, maybe there's something that we can do that has all three. So I'm basically thinking that there'll be like a strong midline and the bottom half of the shape will drop down, letters will drop down, and then mountains will shoot out the top and then form the top half of the shape and with those letters kind of filling in and then the mountains will settle to form that shape. Everything very angular and the whole thing will just be really fast and snappy. This is my idea, let's see if it works out. So I pulled apart this vector logo in Illustrator separating everything that I would want to use to animate on different layers. This is just a vector logo that I found by searching for Mountain Dew's brand assets online. Normally when you're working with a client, they would provide this stuff, but since I'm not working with Mountain Dew, I just found this online, probably committing a crime, like I said before. So I pulled everything onto different layers, labeling them here, and then I have another artboard where I kind of drew some other assets I think I might want to use, like some mountains that I could animate, and then what I do is I will use a tool Overlord. It's a nice little plugin that I can use to just easily push parts over. So if I wanna just kind of push in these letters here, I can easily push them over and then animate them when I wanna use them. It's a much quicker, cleaner way for me to work. So then I just start blocking stuff out. The first thing I try is just roughly opening up this shape. And just by looking at this, I decide, okay, this isn't gonna work. I know that there's no easing or anything on here, but just seeing this like this, I don't like the way this is going. So then I throw in my idea of sliding up some mountains and I can see, okay, there's something potential here. So let's push it a little bit further and put the mountains going up and down in some nice little motion. And I think this is pretty cool. Okay, we can start to see how this could possibly work. So now let's add in some more elements to this. So we have the mountains going up and down. We put in the rest of the kind of general logo shape to see what it looks like when the mountains come down and put in some of the text. And I can see, okay, this is probably actually gonna work. And then I put in an adjustment layer with a drop shadow in here just to kind of roughly give it that outline to see what that would look like too. And I can now really kind of get the big picture. Okay, this is probably gonna work. I should continue pursuing this direction now that all of these pieces here kind of look good together. So then I'll start just kind of going down different avenues. Let's add a little bit of rotation to this. Too much, doesn't look great, but I'll also go in and I will 
start refining some of this mountain movements here, trying to bend it back down to match the original logo shape and see if that's working. And we'll just keep going down this, refining a little bit more and more, make the text a little bit slicker, make the mountain shapes a little bit slicker so when they come in, they match that original shape a little bit more. But I never want to get too far down any one individual path. So before I make any of these mountains or text too slick, I got to start bringing in the other elements. So in this case, the outlines and everything like that. And once I start doing that, I'm starting to see some problems here. So when we start adding in the outlines for the mountains and stuff like this, we can see we're starting to get a lot of these weird edges and stuff popping out but that's no problem, we can look at this stuff later. And a little trick for something like the mountains here, so this outline adds a little bit of complication to trying to match stuff up. It's a lot harder when you have outlines to match these, uh, these animation cuts versus just being filled. But my trick here is we're doing something called a match cut. So basically we're just gonna cut here when it's still in a pretty um, high velocity, high rate of speed, that's when we're gonna cut this layer into the next layer. We're doing that with all the mountains here. Cause if we tried to just make this a really slow ease in, it's gonna have to be a lot um, smoother with the motion to try to get these to match up. But if we cut this layer while it's still moving pretty fast, we have a lot more artistic liberty of how different the shapes can be. So if I play this again, you can see that we're actually cutting while they're still pretty different, but because we're doing it so fast, your eye doesn't really pick up the difference there. There's a little bit of a trick to it. You can get away with a decent amount if you do it with speed. Then I had the brilliant idea to add some spin to this. We're gonna be on the fence about if we keep this or not, but it adds some some of that movement we're talking about. It's some really exciting stuff, you know, like you're spinning in your gamer chair after, you know, a couple cans down the hatch. So I don't like to pre-comp things until they're in a really good spot. I like to keep things really flexible, but at this point I feel like I'm good to pre-compose these mountains here pre-compose them, put them in their own composition like this. It put them upside down for some reason. Not sure why it did that, but it's all right. And now in this case, I can add this mountain fill layer. So this mountain fill, all we're doing here is we add a zigzag effect onto this. This is zigzag, we can do that and that kind of gives it this little mountainous texture. And then this little fill is parented to everything else so it spins around with it and we're just kind of animating this up and down to kind of give it that nice shadow obviously we're going to keep it in the same color palette so it is kind of an abstract mountaintop and i think that really adds a nice touch to it now at this point i was really happy with where this logo was except for the really small details you can see that i'm having a lot of I guess they're called bugs. I was having a lot of little bugs and stuff like this where the lines were getting cut off and snapping around and you know, uh, stuff getting masked weirdly. And I was just spending a lot and a lot of time just doing mindless manual labor, trying to move masks around and doing tons and tons of keyframes on every single frame trying to fix this stuff and i don't like doing that i don't like um putting keyframes on every frame if you ever get to a point where you're literally like rotoscoping something at that point i think it's time to really just delete everything and start over and that's what i did so i rebuilt the scene with all of my previous knowledge that i have built upon how to do this and it didn't take long to rebuild it with less layers, less keyframes overall, still a good amount, but you can see they're much cleaner now as compared to like this in here, where we are literally masking every single frame of this with this dumb mask that I hate, right? Compared to nice and clean in here, no real masks going on anymore. So rebuild it better, faster, stronger, nicer, smoother motions, less is more, okay? And then at this point, I'm looking at this for a long time and I'm now starting to question the spin. Is the spin really necessary? And so I went back and I did one without the spin 
And I can't really decide which one is better. Wait, this needs the mountain fill. There we go. I can't decide which one is better. So let me know in the comments which one you like better, with the spin or without the spin. And then I put them into a comp that basically does something like this, where it comes in and it snaps on when it clicks. And the tough part about getting this kind of outer shadow here is that you can't really do something like a stroke on this because what happens if you try to add a stroke onto here is that, let me open this up. If you try to add a stroke on here, it doesn't keep that sharpness on here. If you know a way to make it keep that sharpness, let me know. But the Mountain Dew logo has, has really sharp edges, so we couldn't do that. So what I ended up doing was just duplicating this layer and adding a fill, a black fill to it, and then using a transform effect to scale it up and skew it a bit until it kind of fit right behind it. And it's not perfect right now. You can see it's not a perfect outline. If I had a more time to spend on this, I've spent enough time on this. All right, I'm not getting paid for this. If I had more time, I would make this um, fit nicer in here, really kind of get in here and adjust this to be better, but I just don't feel like doing this anymore. So that's it, that's what we're gonna do. But I'm still trying to think of a better way to get this outline on here, but it, it looks something like this. All right, it's pretty good. So we either have this one here with no spin, or we have the one that spins here like this. So let me know which one you like better, spin or no spin. And then I imagine, you know, you could use it with some kind of footage and dope sound effects and music and it would be like this, you know, yeah, whoosh, bink, Mountain Dew, get it now, right? That's pretty much it, all right? That's pretty cool, that's really it. All right, all right folks, that is it for this video. Let me know if you liked it. I gotta go lay down, I am jacked up on Mountain Dew right now. But let me know if you wanna see more videos like this, if you have any more ideas for other uh, brand logos you want me to animate, leave me a comment of which brand logo you want to see me do next. I gotta get out of here.